In this lecture, we will talk about microchip electrophoresis. So, microchip electrophoresis is uh, essentially adaptation of uh, the capillary electrophoresis to a microfluidic chip platform. So, uh, we'll discuss in this lecture how we can uh, perform this uh, capillary zone electrophoresis experiment that we've discussed in the previous lecture in a microfluidic device. But first, let's see why do we actually want to miniaturize an electrophoretic system? So there are advantages to miniaturization and some of the advantages are common to any type of microfluidic system and uh, other uh, advantages are uh, particularly relevant to the electrophoretic systems. Now the common uh, advantages uh, of microfluidic systems uh, which are also applicable to this uh, electrophoretic system is that when you reduce the size of uh, your system then you will need less volume and that would lead to some amount of cost cutting and reduce the cost of uh, the analysis. Then you can uh, do massive parallelization of these, uh, ex and these uh, separations on a single device because you can integrate large number of channels onto a single microfluidic chip and therefore parallelization is another advantage and of course you can integrate the electrophoretic process with a downstream or an upstream process so uh, for example if you are analyzing DNA uh, then you can have some kind of uh, let's say DNA amplification uh, upstream and then uh, followed by that you can do an electrophoretic separation. So all of these processes can be integrated onto a microfluidic device. But And uh, the first three advantages, these advantages are common to any microfluidic system. But the main advantage that we get by miniaturizing an electrophoretic system is that for a given resolution we can obtain the same analysis, we can do the same analysis in a shorter time. Now to look at this we'll uh, we have already seen that the time taken for the capillary electrophoresis process is given by L over mu times the electric field. So this is the electromigration velocity and this L is the length of the capillary. So here we are using the uh, mobility of the fastest uh, ion in the system and because electric field is given by the applied voltage across the channel over the length so this can be written as L squared over mu1 times E and this is an estimate of the time taken for the electrophoretic process and we've also seen that the resolution is given by the relative mobility mu1 minus mu2 between uh, two uh, adjoining uh, zones over the square root of diffusivity times the voltage applied across the channel over mobility and square root of this. So uh, from here we can see that the resolution uh, for a given species that we are uh, uh, trying to analyze, the resolution depends only on the voltage drop that we are applying across the channel. So if you apply the same uh, voltage across the channel ends, uh, you'll get the same resolution. But if you reduce the size of the system, in particular its length, then the time will reduce significantly. To get an estimate of the typical times that are involved, in capillary electrophoresis uh, experiments. So we'll take a typical value of mobility which is 5 into 10 to power minus 8 in SI units, meter square volt inverse second inverse. Uh, the voltage drop across the uh, capillary is of the order of few kilovolts. So we'll take 5 kilovolts and in conventional systems, the length is about a meter or a half meter. So this is for conventional.
conventional electrophoresis, capillary electrophoresis systems. Now, uh, if you, we know that for fixed voltage, uh, the resolution is going to be the same. So, time will be given by 50 into 10 to the power minus 2 squared because we have 50 centimeters over the mobility times the voltage uh, that we have applied. So, sorry, here we have delta V because uh, we have used electric field is delta V over L. So, if you do this calculation, you will get that the time taken is about 1000 seconds and that's approximately 16 minutes. So in conventional systems the uh, time taken is order uh, 30 minutes or 15 minutes depending upon the length and the voltage applied. But uh, it's uh, we can actually reduce this time if we reduce the length. So if we apply the same voltage drop across the capillary but now reduce the length by 10 times so typical length for a microfluidic and device will be of about 5 centimeters so what it means is that if you reduce the length of your system by an by a factor of 10 and because time depends upon l squared so the time will reduce by a factor of Uh, 100. So that means the same process uh, with similar resolution that, that was earlier taking 1000 seconds can now be completed in just 10 seconds. So that is uh, why uh, this uh, process has an advantage if we uh, integrate into a microfluidic device. And also note that if you do the same process in lesser time and that means that these peaks will diffuse less and the problem is that the more the peaks diffuse the signal uh, becomes more noisy because you have less signal that you get from these peaks so if these peaks have higher concentration it would give better signal so even your signal uh, can improve if you analyze the data in uh, over shorter times so if you do the same process over shorter times the peaks are going to diffuse less so it is easier to detect that so uh, irrespective of whether the electrophoresis is performed in conventional or microfluidic systems the channel dimensions need to be small so we've uh, seen earlier that the channel dimensions are order 10 to 100 micrometer and the reason for this is that because you are passing current through this system and you have an electrolyte which acts as a resistor and uh, applying such high voltage uh, you will uh, and over a low resistance system you will get large uh, heat generation which is called the joule heating which uh, in our case is simply uh, V squared over the resistance of the channel and because of joule heating your uh, temperature of the system can increase. So if the dimensions are small the, or the diameter of the channel is small then the surface uh, area uh, increases relative to the volume and because of larger surface area there is efficient heat transfer to the surroundings and you can maintain the same temperature or you can maintain safe temperature delta T or the safe temperature difference between the surroundings and the inside of the channel. So that's why uh, you always do these experiments in a capillary. If you do it in a macro scale system like you do in gel uh, electrophoresis or, or on a gel slab then you need to apply uh, lesser voltage because uh, uh, that would lead to higher voltage with higher voltage will lead to higher joule heating now to get get an estimate of 
you know if we even further reduce the uh, the diameter of the channel how can it help us and microfluidics also allows you to reduce these uh, the channel diameter so from 100 micrometers if we go to 10 micrometers you will see that it can have a lot of benefits now the uh, to see what is the advantage of even reducing the diameter uh, what we'll do is that consider that we have a capillary or a microfluidic channel and the typical let's say diameter is order d and length is l so the heat that is generated uh, within this system so q is given by v squared over r so if you apply a fixed electric field then the voltage is given by e into l so v squared is e into l squared and the resistance uh, of this channel is given by l the length of the channel sigma over sigma times the cross sectional area so if we look at just the scaling so this would scale as l over sigma d squared because d squared is the scale for the cross sectional uh, area so what you get is that if you substitute this scaling over here so we get uh, l times sigma d squared so this is e squared sigma l d squared so this is the scaling for the heat that is generated by applying electric field e in a capillary of diameter d and length l now uh, in this system the capillary uh, the heat is being generated within the bulk volume and it has to be released or transferred to the surroundings so this heat transfer will take place due to conduction and eventually these two should balance each other the heat that is produced and heat that is being lost to the environment should balance in steady state and the scale for this is because the heat is removed by conduction through these channel uh, walls let's say of uh, size delta of thickness delta so this is the scale for the heat transfer and uh, if you shrink the whole system keeping the same shape the delta and the thickness delta will also scale as d so the scaling argument says that this is the d is the relative thick uh, is the scale for the thickness of the channel and the cross sectional area scales as d times the length of the channel so if you have a circular channel so you have 2 pi r times l so the scaling for area cross sectional area or uh, the area over which the through which conduction is taking place is d times l so if you equate these uh, the scales for heat that is being generated and that is being lost so what you get is that e squared scales as 1 over l squared or in other words e scales as l inverse that means uh, that if you want to maintain same temperature difference between your electrolyte that is filled in this capillary and the surroundings so if you shrink down the size of the channel you can actually apply higher electric field and of course if you apply higher electric field that would lead to smaller time of analysis and uh, and even better uh, resolution so that is how uh, if we reduce the size you can at the length of the capillary you can reduce the time and if you reduce the diameter of the capillary you can uh, even apply higher electric field because you have efficient heat transfer 
uh, from the uh, inside of the capillary to the surroundings. So uh, that is why miniaturization can, can help in, uh, uh, in improving the performance of electrophoresis. So finally we need to see that uh, how we can actually translate this uh, electrophoretic uh, or CZE uh, capillary zone electrophoresis to a microchip format. So typically we use a cross chip geometry something like this. So these have these four channels which are connected to north, west, south and east wells. So what we do is that uh, we'll uh, in, uh, in simple terms you can do the uh, separation in two steps. So the first step is that so the idea is that we need to create conditions like this. We need to create initial condition where we have a background electrolyte and a very sharp zone of the mixture and then we'll apply an electric field. So how to do that in a microfluidic device? So what we'll do, we'll first fill all these channels with the background electrolyte and how you can do it is that you can fill the background electrolyte in these west, south and east wells and you can apply vacuum over here so that will fill the whole channel uh, all the channels with the background electrolyte Fall after that we will put the sample which is shown in blue color over here which we want to analyze and we will put the sample over here then uh, in this system we can uh, we should be able to control the voltages at all the channel ends if we do that uh, in the first step we need to create this uh, initial zone of the sample mixture uh, in that case we will apply the voltages in such a way that the electric field points uh, from the uh, points downward towards the junction from the reservoir where we have initially dispensed the sample and electric field comes uh, towards the junction uh, from the west and east reservoirs and goes away from the junction in the channel that is connected to the south reservoir. So what happens is that when you apply an electric field as shown by these arrows uh, it derives an electroosmotic flow. So when you have electroosmotic flow along this uh, electric field, it will bring this sample and fill this whole channel. And these two electric fields are needed in this channel because if you don't apply these two fields, what will happen is that this sample would diffuse into these channels. So we want, don't want this. So having a field like this you will have a flow of two streams like this and that would lead to a sharp interface of this sample over here. In the next step what we do is that we change suddenly change the voltages in such a way that the electric field now points in these directions. So when you reverse this electric field there will be a separation of the components that are present in this sample. But uh, during this uh, separation we also need electric field that is pointing uh, towards the north and the south reservoirs. So what will it do is that it will take the remaining sample back into the north and the south reservoirs. If we don't do this the sum of the sample might actually leach into the main separation channel. So if you do this uh, uh, this type of a voltage sequencing scheme you can have a very tight injection and separation. So in the video that you will see next this is how uh, this separation of two fluorescent species is taking place. So first you will see there is an injection step and followed by that there is a uh, separation step.